Center for Innovative Leadership video podcast being brought to you by the National Association of Elementary School Principals. Welcome to the NASP Center for Innovative Leadership video podcast. We're Andy Jacks and Hamish Brewer, two of the fellows with the Center for Innovative Leadership. Andy is an elementary principal at the Ashland Elementary School in Manassas, Virginia, and I am the principal at the middle school of the Fred Lynn Middle School in Woodbridge, Virginia. The Center for Innovative Leadership video podcast is all about real schools, real work all across the country. They're all coming, uh, they're overcoming obstacles in unique and innovative ways. And what can we learn from each other, the insight, the experiences that we can take back and apply to our schools and learn from each other. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share to uh, to keep in, in touch with the conversation around innovative leadership. Yeah, and like the kids always tell me, we make these YouTube videos. They always say to look down there and click on the like. I guess they're like on the YouTube. There's a button you can click, click, like, like, share, all that stuff. Make sure you guys do that. Today, our guest is the Chasing Greatness, Don Epps, principal at Royster Middle School in Chanute, Kansas. Is that how you say it? Chanute? Chanute, Kansas. Chanute, Kansas. He has a wife and two kids. I know he has kids because in his videos, I see his kid jump in probably as much as he is which I think is super cool. I know uh, my son and my kids love making videos. Kids all want to be like YouTubers and video stars. It's a whole other generation, right? So you can follow Don at Don Epps EDU on Twitter and Facebook is probably just Don Epps. I know he's everywhere on Facebook too. And uh, hashtag Chasing Greatness. Don, welcome on board the Center for Innovative Leadership Podcast. What do you think, man? What's up? This is this is really. I'm like got goosebumps. I can't even hardly say. It. I'm just hovering over my chair right now. This is so exciting. So this is gonna be this is gonna be a really awesome, really awesome podcast. Here. I look forward to it. Well, uh, I've I've definitely uh, known Don for a number of years now, uh, and loved watching his journey and watching his growth as a leader, watching him grow in his schools. But one of the things I love about uh, uh, Don is he's an authentic, real dude. Like he's just him. There ain't no sideshow. There ain't no pretending. There ain't nothing. It's just the real Don until he becomes, oh, yeah, Don, WWE, baby. Let's see. Well, do you mind if I just go ahead and put this on for the interview here? Oh, yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah. We love it. Like I said, we have to make sure that we got a little Hulk Hogan in the action here. But you never know what's going to happen. You just never know. And so, <laughs> Where did this love of wrestling come from, Don? Oh, I, you know, it, it's, it's great. I, I love the showmanship. I, I love the, I love the competition, you know? And so growing up, you know, we didn't, we, didn't, we had like four channels growing up and I had either, I had the human remote control. So I had to get up and change the channel, stand in front of the TV. I was the youngest, <laughs> I was the youngest of like eight kids or I'm sorry. I'm the youngest of three children. Sorry about that. I don't know where eight comes from. But anyway, like, but I, I was eight years younger than my brother. So therefore I had no power. So yeah. Don, go stand in front of the TV, and so then, but always we get like wrestling on TV and stuff like that back in the day, and local like local, local wrestling, Bulldog Bob Brown, the Junkyard Dog, and all something. You guys know and heard of these people, but it's just oh, kind yeah. of funny, yeah. and the kids love it. You know what took me off guard, and we may talk about this later, is like what percentage of kids actually even know who Hulk Hogan is today? It's mm-hmm. it's really discerning. I don't know like what we're we teaching in schools, you know, and so <laughs> like we brought it out that first day of school, and uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, I don't want to hear no John Cena around here, okay? That's not what I want to hear. I want to hear, I want to hear Hulk Hogan. We'll go get way back into some uh, Macho Man and some Ric Flair and some of that stuff. So And Hexel, Jim Duggan, and the Bushwhackers, bro. That's what I'm talking about. There you go. <laughs> what was uh, Ric Flair's? Give me a – give me a two, Give me a two claps and a woo. Yeah. You know, you know what's funny? I don't know about you guys, but as a kid at high school – when we all, for some reason, thought the WWF back in those days was somewhat real, we'd actually be trying some of these moves out on the grass, oh, on the playground. People would be all getting hurt. <laughs> all the time. All the time we try them out. And if you're the youngest, so my younger brother is about five years younger than I am. And we had we would move all the couches and we'd put mm-hmm. blankets and pillows all over the floor. Yeah. And this is back in the day before, like, we had a crazy video game. So we had to make up our own stuff. And we'd, oh, like, yeah. pop rope, like – one of those like bam like <laughs> so you're probably like the younger one they're body slamming you and like- yeah but I, I was pretty solid I, I was I was wider than was tall so I, I was a pretty solid dude we never had I always I love the NFL too and football so I always try to either we do wrestle moves on the couch or we like I do these diving catches into the couch and we never had any arms left on the couch like my, I always wonder if my parents didn't spend money on furniture well we know why now and so yeah. it just get broken so but it was a lot of fun though. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, that, we, need to, we need to bring that back, right? Like, uh, you know, get rid of these video games and have kids wrestle more. You ever wonder, like, these teachers wonder with, like, how boys are in the classroom? They're all over the place, everything else. They don't really understand sometimes how boys are at home. Like, yeah, exactly. we're really destroying everything. I remember breaking a window. We're doing <laughs> jumps off the top bunk. I mean, <laughs> maybe we need to get back to some of that. Maybe that's what we've taken too much away, right, fellas? That's right. <laughs> So, Don, I want to see a big uh, wrestling rink in your school. That's what I want to see, a big wrestling ring with the, with the ropes. You know, you can go bounce off the rope and do like a woo. Well, if it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen to Royce for Proud. So, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, so uh, Don, before we jump into your video, two more things. Pretty excited. You're our first principal from Kansas. That's mm -hmm. a big deal. We're definitely awesome. trying to have a footprint all across the country, yeah. just as any ASP does. Um, but – uh, I know you're a big Rocky fan, and I know Andy likes some, him some Rocky as well. Yeah. Uh, you got to tell us, man, your favorite Rocky movie, one, two, three, four, or five, or 100, or, and favorite uh, Rocky quote, and then let's jump into your video, bro. Well, it, it, this is really – okay, this is a tough question. Okay, number one, Rocky one is a classic, and it's about perseverance. It's about overcoming adversity every single way, not making excuses, and, and just have that hungry look in your eye. And that's what I love about Rocky One. He didn't. He didn't care. He just wanted to go the distance with Apollo Creed. That 14th round where he gets off the mat, and that look he gives Apollo Creed, and Apollo just looks defeated. And what I tell kids, like, when that adversity is Apollo Creed in that moment, you know, you want to look adversity in the face, and you just want to make it go. Oh, I can't defeat this person, you know. And that's that's so awesome, and, you know. And one of my favorite Rocky movies is actually not that Rocky Six and uh, Rocky Balboa, and uh, where it basically is, it's not about how hard to get hit. You got to keep have, how hard to keep moving forward, you know. And just, you know, I just love that whole that whole sequence. But that's so life, and I mean, it, you're gonna get hit in the face in life, and those are just those scars of experience, those scars of joy. Someday, you look back on them, and they, they made you who you are. And so that, that's that's something I want to instill in our kids: just keep moving forward, keep battling, never give up. And don't and don't take failure as as a way to get your head down. Take failure as a way to keep growing and keep learning. That's great, Andy. What do you say, bro? Oh man, that's just good stuff. I, I love how Don uses analogies. You know, I love the metaphors and analogies so much with education. We talk about Rocky and that perseverance piece. I think you're right. That part in the movie with Rocky Balboa, when he, you know, they do like slow motion, he's down. And they really go through this like little like he does his saying, and that's perfect right there. Hey, Mr. Watson, show him the picture. Remember we were up on the Rocky statue up in Philly? Oh, yeah. Right here, yeah. Where we oh, did yeah. A, you know, we had to have that, that yeah. Rocky verse. Yeah. yeah, NASP conference, right? Another yeah. great opportunity yeah. to connect with people and yeah. get to see another part of the country. And, 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 and sometimes it just gives you a chance to get out and, and do something you wish you already, always wish you did, like Andy and I getting out pose in front of Rocky, man. Yeah. yeah, some of the special parts about conferences and things like that is just that time in between sessions, right? We right. get to connect and have fun. Yeah. No, I had that same right. opportunity last year to go to, to go to Philadelphia and do it. I, I it was emotional. I, I, I was an amazing experience. You did a step? Did you run up the stairs? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was so intimidated by that. I just, I just had two chili, feet, uh, two uh, Philly cheesesteaks right before I went, but it just gave me fuel. That's all it was, and so. So, I, I, you know, you dream about those moments for all your life, and it's like it's actually happening. You know, I could, You're I could, the real I could, deal, bro. You're the real deal. I but, love you. But, but, you, but before your special moment that you dream about your whole life, you had to go get into Philly cheesesteaks right before from, that. From Geno's and, and like Geno's and Pat's, I think, the two famous oh. ones right across from each other. Perfect. That's so yeah. You could have done it after the steps. You had to do it before. The yeah, I'll do it before. I got to have fuel. I got to get up there. <laughs> so, so the problem with today's podcast with Don is that we could not even touch his school, talk for three hours, and not even talk school. So I'm it. gonna be the like. No Let's way! Go. I want to go back to this wrestling thing and showmanship. I want to have. A, I can have a whole podcast. Oh. Yeah. The showmanship of wrestling and how that relates to the showmanship of being a school principal, right? Because I know, Don, you are the ultimate showman with what you're doing at school every day, with what you're trying to put on, with your personality, with the pizzazz. Every day has to feel special. Before I get to your video, because we're going to see that in the video, talk to me about that. Like, you you obviously the wrestling thing growing up. And you, I mean, we know what it is, but they, what wrestling does is they do it on purpose, right? It's purposefully yeah. just yeah. big, like everything's monster, right? How does that relate to your uh, leadership in your school? Well, people say, I mean, where do you come up with this stuff or where, where, why do you do it? And it's, it's all intentional. 
and we have to intentionally tell our story. We have to intentionally make acts. We want our kids getting out of cars or getting off the bus, and then I want them running in the building. I want them excited to be in the building. Right. And, I, and I, I take a lot of pride in taking the mundane things in school and or the things we dread and just flipping it totally on its ear. And we'll talk about that later. But it's just I, I, I believe in that. Also, I believe if you don't get out and tell your story, someone else is going to. Mm-hmm. And so – and we, I just want, I want it to be a fun place to be. You know, we just try to flood the positive here and we try to, and it's, it's, it's for the kids, but then it, but it, but it goes out to the parents, it goes out to the community. And so when people think of our school, they think of positive, you know, we, it's not all, it's not all roses around here. We have, we have our struggles, you know, but, but when people think of the school, they think of positive, they think of exciting and that's this place to be, you know, and, um, and I just, I just, I always wanted to be, in my classroom as a student or always wanted to be in my school as a principal. I don't want, I would never want to be in my class and be bored. You see what I'm saying? And that's, that's something I take so much pride in. I want to be excited. You can have your cake and eat it too, that they say, and we, we can, we can achieve, we, we can have high attendance, but we can get it done that way. You know, something I appreciate what you said there too. And this is what I love about how real you are. Like you don't try and, you know, you, you never sugarcoat nothing, man. It's just, it is what it is. You, you know, you spoke about something that a lot of people avoid saying, and it's not always roses. It's not always perfect. Mm-hmm. We have our ups and downs and our challenges. You know, I think that all these folks that put stuff out there and it makes it look all rosy and perfect, it's just not true. And so I appreciate that you've gi- you're giving everybody listening today that feeling that, oh, this is, that's how I feel sometimes. It's not perfect. Andy and I are not perfect. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, we talk about that all the time just to each other. You have to have that person you can call on those kind of days because, you know, the, the principalship, I feel like one day it's like everything's working. You just feel like you've done it. Things have come together. Everything's clicking. And then it's like the very it can be the same day or the next day, everything comes crashing down. Oh, it's, oh. You're like, it's a cross between crying and like mad and angry and, and everything else. But what I love that you said is you can have your cake and eat it too, right? You can get high performance. You can get good attendance. You can get it all low in discipline and do all the fun stuff too. Sometimes, sometimes people think if you do the fun stuff, everything else suffers. If you focus on just academics, it can't be fun. No, you got to work twice as hard, but you get twice the results when you do it too, right? Exactly. Exactly. And you know, you, 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 it's like minute by minute sometimes in your, in your overall outlook, but you got to find that fuel. And the, the, the kids and the teachers are my fuel every day. You know, there, there's, I, I try to be the first person they see when they get off that school bus or out of that car. I'm out in front of the building. I'm trying, and I got my, what I call my, my butt speaker. My, I have this little Bluetooth speaker I put, I put on my back of my hip. This is pretty clear. I have a lot of real estate back there. And I just learn <laughs> music. I'm just like, kids love music, okay? They love music. And I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to fist pump, hug, you know, slap hands, <laughs> shake hands, uh, and, and just get it going, you know? And I so got a I, lot of real estate back there. <laughs> Yeah, he said his butt speaker. That's well, I, uh, one time I, I I fell on it. And it was kind of a bad old deal, but anyway. I, I was, you know, you know. So, Don, what's the feedback from your parent community on this journey that you've been on the last few years? I mean, they you got to tell me they love it, right? Yeah, oh, they they do. I, I have parents want to be in them and, and things, and and like the videos, the videos are just kind of. Kind of they, I get I get like people like, "Where's the video at today?" And I never, I never intended to do one like every day. It's just like I want, I want it to be in the moment. And so, like I said, it may be three in one day, or maybe, maybe. But now it's to the point where people are like, hey, if I don't get a video out, then it's like, what, what, where is, where is it at? And and uh, I just being around our community is incredible. We have incredible uh, four thirteen foundation for our school that helps our kids, and we just do everything we possibly can do to get our parents inter- interacted into our school system. And we're only going to get better. We we still got a long ways to go, but it's only getting better. But no, I have a lot of parent requests of like for, like okay, so here's one. There's a reason why I grew my beard. Okay, and that's like a chia pet, for example. But uh, these little racing stripes right here. But um, there's only one reason. One reason only. That's I want to do a tribute uh, video of Willie Nelson with a hot pocket <laughs> theme. Okay. Our kids love Hot Pockets so much, all right? And I love Willie Nelson. So I'm going to do a – so I, I got my, my, my wig with my ponytails and my bandana. And coming back from Christmas break, you'll be seeing it. But, uh, who's, but your, who's your favorite impersonation you've done so far? I've seen a number of them where you impersonate uh, different singers. It might be Willie Nelson coming up. But, uh, okay. oh, I, I, I did a disservice to Johnny Cash last spring. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, but no, I, I like the Backstreet Boys when I did. I like I do I did like a Backstreet Boys impersonation, and uh, that was kind of fun. Um, but uh, but no, I 
I always tell people if I if I actually had talent and I sounded good and I actually was some I wouldn't be popular with the videos. The videos wouldn't be popular. It's like it's like I, I always I always love it. Like I go I'll go to a, a conference or something and people come up to me who don't know me and like you're so fearless. I'm like I'm I, I have no talent. People I just I just go out and do my thing. I don't. They think it's like I, I encourage people who uh, don't have that. Like I am I might have a horrible thing of voice. It don't matter. And and like I said, we can get to the story. You're you're involved in this, Hamish. You're you're a part of the story, okay? So anyway, you don't even know it yet, but but we can get to that later. We can get to that later. I'll, t- I'll right, talk about the first fail. I had a, a horrible first fail, and uh, doing doing videos and doing stuff like that. So anyway, well, well, I I think uh, you know people follow leaders, right? And people take risks if the leader is willing to take risks. And if yeah. you're gonna put yourself out there with just everything you got, then that's what everyone else is going to do too, man. So I'm, I'm super proud of you doing that. And I know it inspires Hamish and I talk about this kind of stuff. It's definitely inspiring to us to see you do that. So let's get to your school and check out more about that. All right. All right. So let's share. All right. Here we go. Yeah. So people say we're an inner city school. We're a town of 10,000 in the middle of cornfields and being in soybean fields, but our, our school is the only one left down in the middle of town. And so, so we take a lot of pride in just being connected to our history of our town and things. Our, our other two buildings are out on the edge of town. They're newer buildings. And so we just want people when they walk in our building to see what we stand for. You know, we don't want any, we don't want anybody to have any kind of, and, and we're only just beginning on this. This is what we put in this before the school year. Our, our eight character traits we have. And uh, we, we just want people, that's the first thing that hits them. Also, it's, it's great for security. You notice that we can see out of the office, that's our main office there, but, but at the same time, at the same time, uh, it, we do it for a lot for security. And then uh, that's my baby right there. We, and so we put that across the top. And, and, uh, and so, like I said, we, we have a unique situation here. We want our kids to be so active and so involved you know, and, uh, and like I said, we just, that's just what we do. It's kindness of what we do and who we are. That's, I was going to do the interview in front of this right here, but I just, the Wi-Fi and our, and our staff is so active that they're actually playing pickleball right in the gym next door to it. So I, so I didn't, <laughs> things. So it's like no school day, but they're all in playing pickleball and things. That's awesome. But, uh, but that's our four, that's our four focus areas and everything, all our PD, all our efforts, but it goes back to those four areas. And uh, this is something our school does. It's so amazing. We do this huge red carpet, mm-hmm. and uh, the kids feel so honored when they, they come in that first day. And it's so it's just amazing how the, when the kids come in the door, they're ready to go. It's exciting. I really believe. I believe in this ten percent rule. The t- first ten percent of a school year, the first ten percent of a school day, or or of a classroom, can really determine the entire outcome of that that segment or that that time. This is my first Great. year. Yeah, and so, so like this is my first year. I just, I just got there and turned it loose a little bit for the kids. This, this there he year. is. There, there he is. is. Oh my gosh, Hulk Hogan's like rolling over his premature grave right now. But I don't know. But that's, oh my gosh. And so there it is. There it is. That that place erupted. I mean, the decimals is like Arrowhead Stadium out Kansas City. I mean, it was crazy. And uh, and and they didn't even, honestly, they didn't have a whole lot of clue who Hulk Hogan even was. But um. But anyway, but yeah, that's that's a little that's that's disturbing and exciting and motivational at the same time. Uh, and so, this is what we do with the bus races. We we have these school bus races, and so we we took it next level. You know, I did a promotional video, and that and you see our choir sang at the bus race. It's a huge crowd, like three thousand people. This bus race, and we have our Mr. Needham. Our, he drove our bus, and the kids like the first time. That's the first time our kids were really involved in something that year, and really took pride in something, in something bigger than themselves. Kids who never get out of town. Was part of that, and uh, all yeah, this is this. Yeah, I started doing snow day videos, and uh, we got our assistant principal, Mr. Dively, there. And and who, both of these guys on like each side of me have real talent. We were like doing a little bit of um, rapping to this, uh, yeah. And so the day before, I did one. We had a Hold huge on, let's see if you can listen a little bit. This one, can I set this one up a little bit here? This, this one's inc- this one is really awesome. We have this state-renowned uh, choir that's so amazing. 
And so we take every day things, we take every year things, we try to make them an event. And so parent-teacher conference is one that we really incre increase participation in. And so we made a, uh, we made a parent-teacher conference video and where the kids featured it. And there, where, where we took uh, Hey Jude from the Beatles – Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we kind of we the kids sang their own lyrics. Let's talk about me. This is one the football. Oh, that's that's a scary view right there. Okay, anyway. No, but I love that cut shot you did. I love that you're clever with your videos. You know what you're doing. You're thinking ahead about how you're sort of clipping them together to get that maximum effect for what your audience is going to see. That's clever. Yeah, and so it's, it's oh, there's my Backstreet Boys. Okay, so <laughs> is it possible to pause this for a second? Like says up, yeah, 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 yeah. and so I, so so. This is going to be a scary screenshot. Okay, anyway, long story short on this is the day before, I always play music. I, I, I love music. And so kids are all waiting in the commons. We're playing, they're active. And right before they go back to class at the end of lunch, I just I just play random songs. I play everything from, like, Merle Haggard to, like, like Millie Vanilli. I mean, I play it all. I guess they really didn't sing, did they? But anyway, but the point is uh, I, uh, I played this Backstreet Boys song. I want it that way. And I'm I'm not one of those, but they're but they requested it and it, they flipped out over it. And so I said, you know what? They love it so much. I know their moms probably play it. That's what how they tie to it. So <laughs> anyway, I uh, I said, let's do a video on this. And so I and okay, so I had this this I had this awesome video production crew. They're like three 12, 12 year old boys outside uh, the Rocket Nation. They're out. They 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 they're their filmers. They control all the. Uh, like one, one's like security. He controls like kids coming up the steps while we're doing a video. Like, hey, we're shooting a video. We're shooting a video. Hey, can you please be quiet? We're shooting a video. And one's like my filmer. Well, it, it's funny how it all works out. You get some pretty awesome productions that way. And so this one's, I, I want to be treated that way, I guess. I can't remember, but anyway. Let's hear a little bit. Let's hear a little bit. Anyway, yeah, yeah you, have a, uh, you have some some music over top of your video, so it's kind of playing both at the same time. But, dude, I, I love it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> so here we have our active hallway. One of our four focus areas is we want active kids, and so we never take moments to stand around. Our physical education program is like second to none. I mean, it's amazing, and there the kids are always active. They're always doing, and uh, and we take so much pride in that. And that's a big part of our school culture. How but, do you get everybody to dress out? We yeah, so everybody, we, we wash all the uniforms here at school. That's a staff meeting. We, we always get our staff meetings with like uh, – Hold on. I'm going to interrupt you right there because yeah. it's an important conversation. I know we don't have this as much in the elementary, but with uh, NESP, we have so many middle school principals that are part of this too. So that's a big middle school talk. So you guys are talking about dressing for PE. Yeah. I know that even in my daughter's school this year, it was an issue where uh, they used to have uniforms all the time, but now they don't have to wear them all the time. And it's like, a, you know, it's a real challenge for us to get them to dress out all the time. I'd love to know how you get them to do that. Okay. So it's, we started this last year, my first year here, we started the dress out policy and number one, we don't want kids to feel shamed or anything else from, from what kind of what, what, they, what they're wearing or those kind of situations. And so we want everybody to be equal. We want everybody just to be the same and, and, you know, and just be a part of something bigger than themselves. And so what we've done is we buy all the uniforms, obviously, but also we wash them here at school. And so we even have like, you know, we even wash them for if kids are allergic to certain things. And we try to make sure that every kid can be a part of it. Like there's no excuse for them not to be able to dress out. And we'll take care of shoes and those kind of things as well. Mm -hmm. And, but it's never, it hasn't, it has not been an issue whatsoever here. You know, it hasn't wow. been an issue. And uh, and because we just don't want it to be any excuses why a kid couldn't dress out and be a part of be active and be a part of. So do you provide the uniforms? Yes, we we provide the uniform. Now this is a reset. Okay, th yeah, right there. That that'd be PE class. And we have one wow. thing we're, we're unique is we have physical education every day for forty five minutes. Okay, wow. or forty seven minutes for every for every kid. So all five hundred kids in our school will get a minimum of forty seven hour or forty seven minutes of physical education. Wow. And, and, and they don't, we like, we just alternate on the short color, you know, but we used a lot of the shorts from last year and it all worked out. Each kid's, they have a number and they just, we wash it. We, we, we sort it by our, 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 we have amazing educators. They sort it by a uh, class. So like, like we wash, we take ro turns rotating the wash. And so every, every day a new kid's up. So they don't have to wash like all 500 at the same time, you know, and uh, it is, a, it's a wow. very slick system. I highly recommend it. Just because kids don't have to worry about what the other people what they're wearing to other kids, you know, and they don't give kids a, some kids don't give them an excuse not to be physically active. Because here's the thing: if you're physically active, you perform better. Okay, 
simple things in life that we forget the most. And if you're physically active, you perform better in classrooms. So later in this video, we're going we're to look at like Testapalooza and how we did this, like a major theme of Testapalooza. So, um, but yeah, it, it was a really amazing setup. We, and then our kids, they could be active for almost 120 minutes a day between our, our dedicated time at lunch and before and after school. We, we could be, it's amazing. So we do the same thing. We, we perform better as a staff when we do this, you know, and uh, we always get, have a fun way to get, get it started off. This is, I'm doing a little bit of from dodgeball here, doing a little bit of uh, <laughs> the Cobra. We are, we are Royster. And, the, and this is, we get, a, we get a smaller face with our staff. We'll even start the day. Okay, this is our countdown video. So I, I may have to set this up a little bit. Okay. So, I got, I'm going to keep coming back to this, Doc. Because you are so willing to do anything, your staff is pretty yeah. all in in these videos. I've noticed that, right? People yeah. jump in and they're not just pretending. They're not, I mean, stuff that's happened sometimes. We're like, okay, whatever. They look like they're having fun too, they're man. They're really doing it. Yeah. No, I, I promise you, I, I we have the most incredible group of educators who care about kids in America. I mean, it's just amazing. And, uh, and I have a big philosophy on this. You go in as a new leader, you listen to them. You listen to the people that you serve. And then, then, you, then you have action from that, you know. And so, and we just had, we off to a great start here with the staff. And I'm very, very blessed. Um, so, so I was tasked with a big challenge. It's probably my biggest challenge ever. You know, I, just like anyone else, I don't fancy state assessments like anyone else. But that's part of what we do. We have to do them, okay. And, it's a, it's, and so you don't have a choice in it. So I said, you know what, State, if, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. And I want, I want to try to take the motivation factor out of state testing, okay? Because too many times we blame, well, kids didn't care. They didn't try. Why this deal about closing the caring gap? And I said, we're, kids are going to try. They're going to care. Just let's, let's get this done. So we want to remove that as an element. So what we went back to do is, this is a really amazing. All school got involved in this, and we're, we created what's called Test Palooza, Okay. And uh, it's never been done before. I've never seen this done before. I don't know it. I, I'm, I'm not saying no one's ever done something like this, but we wanted to make learning testing an experience for the kids, something they looked forward to. Mm -hmm. And so we start off, this is very simple. We start off, I, I wanted to like greet the kids to come in the building. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe we have the firefighters out there one morning, uh, the first day of testing. Maybe we can set it up to where we have like fireworks. Well, that, you know, I, come, I went a little bit over the top there, you know, in city, you know, but anyway, but that's all right. So then the teachers said, won't well, do countdown videos. And so the teachers, each team, and this year is going to be, it's going to be next level this year, but now the, the each teacher team, and then we had a student representing our Stuco, each did a countdown video going seven days out. And so we built them up. And so each day, this is one from our science team. And this was baby, 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 baby by salt and pepper. And so anyway, and they made up their own lyrics. I didn't do, they just had me in here as a cameo in this one. Uh, our social studies team almost got banned from the internet. You know, it, it was, it was, you'll see it coming up here pretty quick. They, it was pretty aggressive. They, uh, they took, maybe got back video. Oh, yeah. And so anyway, so that, that's actually, that's, that's Mitt right there, little baby newborn from Mrs. Murray right there. And so, uh, th this is our, uh, this is our <laughs> baby got back. Uh, and so, uh, we had all the kinds of lyrics worked up. This is our, our encore electives and they came up with brain activity and they did all, they did a whole video. This is like a seven minute video clip by itself, okay? And this is one to, to YMCA was testing with our math team. And so, and I, I didn't do any of this. They all came up with themselves. It was amazing. They, it was so awesome. This is, so I had to top them on day, on day seven. I didn't show all of them here, guys. On day seven, I had to top them somehow. I couldn't do it. So I had to bring out Charlie and Sarah. And That's we took, um, we took the Grease song, uh, you know, we got test scores. They're multiplying that, that song. Anyway. No, 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 let's hear it. Let's hear it, Tom. I'm going to pause this. Let's hear it. Uh, I'd go back. It's been a while. My wife wrote the lyrics this one. Uh, she's a great lyricist. Uh, let's see here. All right. We got test scores. They're multiplying. And we want you in school. And, okay, I, that's not Anyway. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> so this is our first day. We had the fire trucks out there. And, all oh, this is so much fun. The firefighters were hilarious. You know, that one kid run up there like a, about a 4240, and, and so uh, – and they said, we got a runner, we got a runner. And so, anyway, it's it so much fun. Can you go – Andy, can you go back on that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just – I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just, just, I, I put way too much stuff in here. I knew I did. Uh, dude, I'm just enjoying you. I love it. I love it. I love your personality. And so, right. the one with the – okay, so, so here's the routine. We went. 
we went from outside the big, the, we had each day we had firefighters, we had the marching band, we had drum corps, we had the, the community college brought their sports teams out. We had parents one day. We had, we just had a huge lineup of people, we had business members, people in our community all came out to greet the kids, had signs. And so, and you'll see some of that in here. I'll just let it play once we, but I kind of set it up. So once we came in the gym, we went to the, or once we came in the building, went to the gym, we do what we call a brain blast assembly. And we just tried to turn up the, just get our blood, get our heart rate up. And we were dancing, we were doing activities. And, uh, and that one of there is me doing Cotton Eye Joe. And, uh, and the kids just kind of simulate what I dance. And we, and we had different, we had teacher teams leading the way. And, and one, uh, Mr. Burnett, our, our vocal teacher came up to me on the third day and says, Mr. F, we've got a problem. I said, what, what are we, what's going on? Like we hit 122 decimals in the gym yesterday. During the pep, I, I, I went, yeah. I, oh, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, we can't do that. Yeah, that's not good. So anyway, <laughs> but uh, the kids are so excited. I mean, they have a sweat going. Literally, tell me in America where kids got a sweat going before they go test, and they're excited. Not Inside not the nice. testing room, they had mints, they had chocolates, and uh, they had all these things set up for them inside the testing room itself. Had water, and we we we, we monitored like their their test performance behaviors and things, and we gave them tangible things to try to reach for, like in a point system. Not nothing, like, not a test score, not the test score, but things like did you have your device charging ready to go? Did you have, did you have a good attendance? And our attendance was nuts. It was crazy. We averaged it round up to ninety nine percent attendance for the week, hmm. and then one one day we had one sixth grader gone one day out of hundred and sixty five kids, and now because they were sick, they couldn't help it. I mean, they just couldn't help it, and so. But it was amazing, and and so we made it all. We just turned testing into an event. So sorry about that. Right. So you, I'll, I'll shut up for a minute here. I've been talking too much. And so, <laughs> dude, this is all about you. Talk as much as you want. And so, but I, I just loved how we the kids came in and they they had a smile. We had a yeah. That, that's a lot of girls going up there in the front. That's that's some <laughs> gravity. And after the testing's over, that each day we had thirty minutes of free play. And so we just let them free, just get their energy out. And we, like guys, we don't have any room here at Royster. I mean, we're literally landlocked. And I mean, it's not, it's not beautiful, you know. So yeah, I mean, just as far as the outside perimeter of it. So it's just, we just use everything we can. Hear the drum corps that one morning on the morning motivate or the the greeting, amazing drum corps from the band, from high, high school band. They're playing "Hey Baby," and we got the kids going out here. And uh, that's a parent group that came out. And uh, I got a little Chasing Greatness shirt on there, Mr. Bogle. And so anyway, oh, well, I had Wavy Arm Man. I forgot about Wavy Arm Man. That was awesome. <laughs> and so, but our teachers, you know, led by Mrs. Jones, she she helped organize all all the videos. We helped organize the people for the out in the front. And uh, and that's just that's a lady in town, a great supporter who has a State Farm agency. That's my son Charlie. He he he's like a comfort dog. I mean, I'm telling you, that dude is he like can flip a cold in a heartbeat. And so we're doing the chicken dance. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Oh. I, mean, I mean, you're just such an amazing example of family, servant yeah. leadership. Yes. Just, bro, and I love how you put your staff and your kids before you. Like, you're such an example to us all, bro. Yeah, and that's our big celebration day for state testing we had later. And uh, and now here's, here's our innovation. We, 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 love, we love shooting off rockets. We're the Royster Rockets. And so. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so our kid, they built they built a go kart. They built a go kart, and they got to go out and they test it out. Um, not going. And then Brian Aspinall came this this year for four days. He's in our school. It's amazing. And our kids were like on fire. We had a showcase night. He gave two keynotes. It was, it was an amazing situation. He's a, he's a great friend of our school. And um, and th this girl, she's a, she's a genius. But she would never have known this if this opportunity wasn't given to her. You know, and so she she tapped into a huge market. You know, of of, of her potential. Yep. This is, uh, I, I love these, these are chasing greatness shout outs. And sometimes the hardest thing a person can take is a compliment. You ever thought about that? Mm. And, and uh, so what, what this is chasing greatness, like, Hey, here's the chasing greatness shout out. And just do, I've got a whole bunch of them, but I mean, it's just, and kids. Um, I, you just make us all better, bro. Like yeah. I, I'm in awe, Andy. Oh, this is great. This is great. So, it, it, so we also have a lot of uh, listeners to these podcasts too, not just watchers. So if you were listening, the one thing he was just showing us, he does um, 
like just one on one, just I don't know if that's Facebook Live or whatever videos that that is. Uh, just shout outs, just saying some good about that. And that's something that's so important, just to recognize good things all the time. And I'd say, what as a leader, if you're a leader out there and you're sort of down in the dumps, or if you're frustrated, or if you're, you know, like just having a tough year, one of the best things you can do for yourself is to intentionally go around and recognize others and give them shout outs because it's such a good yeah. relationship piece and it makes yeah. you feel better too. It's like such a win-win. Sometimes the only way to get out of something negative is to be like insanely positive, right? Exactly. And that's exactly what you're trying to do every day. And like you said, you start with just sort of videos and now you're probably so addicted to them and so is your school that they're just part of who you are now, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just normal part of our day. And and uh, <laughs> like I said, so it all, it all started – you know, I went, I went to a principal association conference in Missouri, like when I was a Diamond High School principal, and I heard, heard Principal Caffaley, and he talked about the power of, of your people you serve hearing you every day. Mm -hmm. So then at that point, I was like full on addicted to Hamish Brewer at that point, and I was watching your video, like almost, almost I used to keep repeating it over and over again, but like of the two million views you had on that or whatever you had, I was like 1.2 million of those, and so. That's what happened. I always knew there was something about that. <laughs> So anyway, the continuous cycle, and uh, I think the other half was me. So you know, we, the two of us got them covered. <laughs> and so to, to say this really, really quick here. So what happened was I had come back, and I'm the high school principal, and and they they literally, I just get on the intercom, I just turn it loose, I just turn it loose, and it's this lifetime intercom. So the only people heard is kids in our school and teachers in our school. So then it got to the point where. Like kids would come to me who had like college class like, or seniors, they, they, they couldn't hear it on the intercom. So they said, can you put it on Instagram for us and, or, or video? And I said, no problem, man, that'd be great. It was never, that's how it started. I mean, that's how, that's how simple it was. So I had a kid, I think he was literally like a 35 ACT kid. I mean, brilliant. He, he, uh, he filmed me. And the very first time I went, I had this white pole with black vertical stripe down the side. And I weigh about three bills. And so anyway, so I like, and he just did a profile view of me and like only featured my belly. I, I don't really think it's, it, it showed my face. And it was me, like, I, had, I had my, I had, I had a little phone. I had a little phone, like I held up to the microphone and I was playing Hamish's one. He had a Friday morning talk, you know, about, you know, seizing the moment on a Friday morning. I don't know if it's, it's still on Instagram. I got it saved. And, and so I like, and I just turned loose. Like it was amazing. Like, the, the vocal on it was amazing. The, the, the words were amazing. And I turned it loose. And then I, I got the video. I looked at it. Oh, my gosh. And so anyway, but uh, that was a, the video of the fell. The, the message was awesome. Yes. And so, so what that's turned into is now I just, it's just little by little. And then I came, I came to Chanute, the middle school principal. I said, I have to reach my people. I ha and so I started using these videos to reach out. and start, I never was on Facebook before I came here last year. And so I got on Facebook and – and I just wanted to, I wanted to control the narrative on that. And uh, it's, it's been so much fun. The kids get involved in them. I mean, our school kids get involved in them all the time. And, and we just try to make it about them, make it fun for them. And so. That's how Sam sure school district's proud to you. So what's your school district there for Royster? Is it Royster school district or is no, it? No, it's Chanute 413 school district. So, so our middle school is actually a different mascot, a different name than our like Chanute high school blue comments. And so yep. and, and we're, we're roughly about, 1800 in our school district roughly and uh and about 10,000 in our community and so okay and where's Chanute in Kansas it's southeast Kansas we're make it simple we're literally an hour and a half south of Kansas City okay and so okay. yeah so we're on the we're on the eastern side of the state and we're, we're right in the middle we're like the cultural mecca between Tulsa Wichita Kansas City and Springfield Missouri and so so it, it works out really good. Is, so that like gonna, rural, is that like rural or is it just small town or? We're, we're small town. We're small. Yeah. We're, I mean, I, I think I grew up in a town of like 500 people, but it's like right. a big city. If we have a Walmart and a McDonald's and we're, we're cooking around here. Yeah, so if you got at least one stop light, you're good, right? Yeah. So, but, uh, but no, like I said, we, we, we have we're agricultural base, you know, but just, but our town itself, we, we have a very strong industrial base. So, so we have, we're a huge hub for airline. And so, like, we have aerospace technologies that are here in town. So, we're a very progressive community. You know, it's just amazing the partnership we have. And what I loved about Chanute is we're, like, tradition of innovation is our motto for our town. But here in our school, our school district, we are not going to sit around and let things happen. We're going to be out on the leading edge of it. And that's why, that's why I love the school district so much. And that's what we're com committed to doing. Yeah, look, Don, I see so much of that already, you know, like, and, and opportunity with those business partnerships maybe for you guys down the, uh, down the, uh, in the future. But uh, so many takeaways from today's conversation, Andy, like it just, 
blows my mind. I really, truly, um, really believe this, that you're an example to us all. I mean, you just inspired me over the last 45 minutes to an hour, completely inspired me. A couple of things that stood out for me, Andy, was you're, you're, you're explicit about your message. You're explicit about your vision. And every single person knows it, believes it, follows it, and is all in. And your servant leadership and your fun, engaging, you know, like Andy said earlier, you're not worried about what nobody thinks. If anything, that pulls in even more people as a result of that. But Andy, what are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, you're fearless. So you said it about someone said you were fearless. I agree with them. I think you're fearless. I think you put it all out there. I think it inspires others to do the same. And obviously your school is taking along, along for the ride with you. Some comments I wrote down in my notes were, um, one, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can get good scores and good schools and have a ton of fun that you have to be very intentional about all the actions that you're doing. You talked about the 10% rule, right? 10% at the beginning of your day, make a big deal. That was um, cool. But uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very inspired this morning and I can't wait to, um, to see uh, the Willie Nelson tribute video yeah. and see more about the yeah. butt speaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, coming soon. I just want to say thank you for making it safe for all of us. Yes. Thank you for making it safe for us to all be ourselves and, and, you know, just have fun and make fun of ourselves and not take ourselves yeah. too seriously. Right. Like, you're the real deal, bro. And I hope that this is our best viewed video because it's just so much good stuff for mm -hmm. so many people to feel. They, they connect with you. They relate to you. You make it real. You're the real deal, bro. So thank you. Well, it's, you guys are the real deal. That's who you guys. You guys are the one out there. You're, you're voicing this. You're living it. You're my role models. I hope you know that. And I said, I, I, I still haven't sat down yet. I'm still just hovering over my chair. All right. I'm so excited to be here. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. So what's yeah. coming up next for you? Like how, tell, tell the audience how we can follow you online, where they can find you and what's coming up next for uh, Don. Well, we're working hard. I'm trying, I'm trying to get a website up and I just want to have a website of like this educational resources of things that that's worked well for me. You know, the high school, I have a unique experience of being a high school principal and very successful at that. I just, I had a calling to get to the middle school level. I always felt as a high school principal, those kids sometimes are a little too far gone, but we've tried to save all of them. But, but I, you know, you ever thought about this? Where do dreams die? You go, as a kindergarten kid, kids come in with these high hopes and these dreams. They can be anything they want to be. And then somewhere along the way, some kids have, are, 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 those dreams are taken from them. And I always thought maybe sixth grade was like, like that time, that time era. I just want to make sure that our kids have to dream big. Well, I got off, really off topic here. Okay, anyway. Yeah, but, that's but, great. People need to so, hear it. So the point is, I just want to work hard to help serve everyone. I, yeah, I, I would, I want, I want to get involved in it. This is like a simple podcast of things like the life stories, life lessons, you know, just things I learned along the way. I have failed so much in my life, but it's built me who it's kind of turned me into who I am today. And I've had so many incredible people that's, that's helped me along the way, leadership lessons. So, so yeah, I'd like to get all that stuff going, but you know, every single day I'm, I'm, I'm working very hard for the people I serve. And so trying to find that time and trying to find time to do those things. And, and I have an incredible family who, who I want to be a part of the education system with me. You know, I want to bring my kids along and, and my, I have an incredible wife. My wife, here's something she does for culture. Vicki, my wife makes a full on dessert for everyone in our school for their birthday. No matter custodians, wow. teachers, paras, like, like a, a pan of brownie that should be lethal with that homemade frosting. Oh my gosh. And we're pineapple upside down cake. But you know, the little things show that you matter. Take value in people. And then here's another thing I really, I take pride in is, value what others value that's what i really hang my hat on like i may not like the newest music or i may not Fortnite, but i'm gonna learn about it and i'm gonna try to relate to kids with it because once again that shows them that you care about them that's and right. what they value I'm man sorry. you can do a whole nother thing on just that too i think some educators we talk about yeah we know our kids we i don't think many educators know anything about their kids frankly i think they're still stuck in what we like not what they like just like you said how many educators know Fortnite and all these different dance moves and everything else the kids love and it changes so you have to be constantly on your game and constantly right in the, in the middle of what kids like because it's changes from year to year and you gotta be on top of it if you want to connect with them so i like that value what they value and sort of get over your own kind of what you think is the most important sometimes and and really attach them that way and one last time, Don, where do we find you on Instagram and Twitter? I want people to know where to find you, bro. Yeah, Don Epps, E-D-U on Twitter, Instagram. Um, and then uh, Principal Epps on TikTok. That just proves my point here. <laughs> okay, so I'm on TikTok. 
I'm not, I'm not great on TikTok yet, but, uh, and then, um, then Snapchat, um, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm on Don F E D U. Then, and Facebook, I, I guess it's just Don Epps. I don't know. And YouTube, uh, Don Epps, just Don Epps on YouTube, Don Epps channel. And so, awesome. awesome. Well, man, I can't tell you enough. I really enjoyed this. Uh, we were looking forward to it. And uh, I'm so proud of you. So, uh, thank you for sharing this great conversation, all this insight for leadership. All of you guys listening and watching, don't forget to go to our webpage, uh, www.naesp dash or slash CIL to sign up and share your story with us. Uh, keep the discussion going with us on Twitter. For me, it's underscore Andy Jacks. For Hamish, it's at Brewer HM. See past videos on our YouTube channel for NESP as well as at the NESP uh, slash CIL. And um, so, man, what do you think, Hamish? Pretty good stuff, right? Uh, one of my favorites, man. Completely. I'd been amped for this for a long time and yeah. it couldn't come soon enough. But I tell you what, Andy, sensational. People got Absolutely. to hear this guy. Absolutely. Great job, Dom. I'm proud of you, man. Hey, thank you for this opportunity. I'm going to go explain to my superintendent why I'm wearing a bow on, on, on the YouTube. I, I, so, I, don't, I don't think he'll question it at all, frankly. I don't think there's a lot of explaining. What's your superintendent's first. name? What's your superintendent's name? Dr. Out. Kellen Adams. He's a great person. Great person. Well, obviously, obviously, they're doing something right there. They're hiring you. They're getting this thing forward. So shout out to uh, superintendent there. And uh, great job, you guys. They're lucky to have you, bro. Yes. And remember, right, Andy, remember what? Don't stagnate. Innovate. innovate. That's right. Done.